What is going on? I'm Zedma. We are coming to you live from season 36 of the Booming of the Beaches. Now, I wait, don't wake up at 2 a.m. I wait, sleep in and I end up missing almost a chest, not getting that timer going early enough. As you can see here, we got it started 47 minutes ago. You can also see we're getting 13 keys per chest at iron, which is a bit of a drag this season. 28 day seasons are not my favorite those long seasons for example um to get to brick that's gonna take us what is that another that's gonna be another 13 26 that's gonna be another four chests or so somewhere in that neighborhood and as a result that's gonna be at least a day before i can progress to anything terribly useful now of course i could rank up but even with that Things are going to be a bit of a drag this season. You're going to have to be a lot more patient. Now, as far as the paths, this is the crucial, crucial bit. Um, every single top player that I've spoken to has said, go the bottom route. That is this route here. Don't go this route up here. Do not get mortars. And as far as building damage, you can always go through the back door to get that. Every single player go in that bottom road. Now, if you don't have instant training or your engine room locked or you're just going to be playing super casually, you can do different things. But uh, getting that rush to get to heavies is going to make a difference for you. Uh, it's Mortars are not going to be super duper useful. Um, that building damage, like we said, we can get later. So the bottom road gives you more defenses, going to slow things down even more, and it will get you to heavies faster. And then the next step is going to be skipping those boom cannons, potentially getting into brick. And with brick and heavies, you can just battle orders clear everything. Like, you don't even have to do flares, you don't have to use strategies you just battle orders flare battle orders heavies clears every everything and then at that point it's going to be potentially into rocket launchers that's going to be the number one question this year is do you go north and get those rocket launchers or do you keep going and get into rocket choppers we will address those questions a little bit later in the season but for right now i'm going to pause i'm going to pick up all of these things and i'll come back with a base build that's going to blow your mind there she blows. This is the base designed by Mr. P. Shout out to him. Now, this season when copying bases, because of those different paths, you're going to have to hunt around a little bit. Um, most players don't have mortars, but I'm seeing a ton of mortars on my opponents. So I am sticking with the don't go the mortars route. But uh, someone's going to fight me in the comments. And by all means, please do give an argument towards mortars. Mortars aren't going to... Mortars are going to matter early on. Here's my early on tech tree. Tick... One rifleman, maxed zookas, maxed grenadiers, maxed heavies. Three maxed troops early on seems like a mistake, but that long, long season once again. Now, um, I believe that maxed cannons is a mistake. Leave your cannons at tick four because one shot versus most of these offensive troops don't really, like, I mean, anyways, you get the idea. Cannons are going to do lots of damage, whether they're tick four or tick five. Snipers, though, do get those puppies maxed. Those are going to help you. Same thing with flamethrowers. And then also the heavies. I'll show you some early, early hits. Like, you can see here, losing a lot, lot. You just have to have faith in the tech tree this season. Because it's so, so long, you have to have faith in the choices you've made. Even if those choices are in the future. So I just kept losing, knowing that I needed to unlock heavies going to show you um, this attack. 2 minutes, 5 seconds. 2 minutes, 46 is pretty standard. Uh, that's a decent time. You want to be around 242 to 250, somewhere in there. 2 minutes, 5 seconds is ridiculously slow. And you can see here, I am just literally dropping troops. Um, later on, I started dropping my Tick 1 um, medics because they were keeping my, bomb, my Grenadiers alive a little bit longer. But this is the long, long season, and Grenadiers are not everyone's favorite troop. A lot of people really, really don't like Grenadiers because they miss so much. And this season, you're going to watch them miss and miss and miss. A little tip there, do flare in close to the engine room. Don't flare too close, though, because they do friendly fire. They will kill themselves. They'll play past the grenade, and bad, bad things will happen. So, um, one other quick note. Heavy Rush itself does work. You have to plan things a little bit. You can also spread your troops.
some to one side, some to the other. There's a whole bunch of ways to do it. This person went and did not get shock mines, and we're going to make them pay for that. Um, hopefully, I have not yet done a heavy rush against a base that does not have shock mines. Shock mines slows down heavy rush so, so, so much. You'll notice we're not doing anything fancy here. This is just a straight up standard heavy rush. I only have tick two on the flares, trying to leave my flare options open. And if you don't know what I'm talking about there, um, a lot of times you can do some trickery with your flares where you flare towards an engine room and then let the, let the flare expire and then your troops split in wonderful, wonderful ways, but you can't downgrade a flare. And that is where it gets super, super careful. You need to make sure that you're not over upgrading your flare. I feel like tick three is probably very, very safe. So I am sitting here at tick two and having to use a lot of flares, but there's not a lot else to worry about. I'm not throwing smokes or shocks or anything fancy. So lots of time to watch that flare. Make sure our heavies get on top of that engine room. And just like that, we've got three minutes, one seconds. That should be fast enough for a win, almost definitely. First time with this base, let's see. They got 255 though, that is darn quick. Smoking quick. Well, let's have a look at that replay, see what the heck happened there. Let's see what the heck Rohit did, checking out their replay, cause that, I gotta say, that's a great time against this base. Three boats heavies, two boat, they got brick. See, I told you guys brick is just full on ridiculous mode. Out come all of the heavies clearing all of those mines and then battle orders through all of the things. I, I'm kind of surprised that we managed to beat someone who's got brick and battle orders. Now, I'm curious what also what they don't have. What did they not unlock so they can go get brick? Brick is going to be a game changer as you can see there. We should have beaten them, but uh, I wonder if... Oh, of course, a crash. Now, just a quick note, I have solved that crash bug. I will tell you, you know what? See that replay just now? That replay caused our game to crash. If we go watch it again, uh, we can make it not crash. So if we go right here, you'll notice Brick. Watch Brick. Her battle orders is going. Battle orders is going. Battle orders has... I'm going to slow it down here. As soon as her battle orders expires, right there, we can exit out, no problem. Do not exit a replay while battle orders is active, and it, otherwise it will crash. So let's get going. Let's do one more attack, just so that you guys can see that, hey, heavies are fairly viable. Actually, first I was going to check out that person's base. Let's have a look at Rohit's base. Um, enemy, your replay. I want to see what they have. So they only have mortars and cannons, no flamethrowers. So... What they have done is they've gone that top path. They skipped flamethrowers, they skipped snipers, and went that top path, and it appears to be working for them. A little bit fewer keys, but it's just not going to work out long term, I don't think. They're all, they don't have flamethrowers, they don't have shock mines, and as a result, you saw how easy their base was. And so once I get brick, it's going to be on like Donkey Kong, and they're just going to get absolutely pummeled. So... This is like, this is where it starts to get a little bit tricky. We're going to get some heavies, we're going to get some zookas, and this is when we're going to do one of those hits where I was talking about. We're going to send a bunch of our troops up into here. Now that flare is not going to be quite long enough, as you can see there. That flare is going to expire too early on, and now that we've got our troops walking, we can get some of our heavies, some of our zookas, and then they should do a nice little split right about now hoping and hoping and hoping that our Zookas stay the heck away from those mines. There are so many mines, we have no troop health, and no troop health means dead Zookas more often than not. Like, it's just any time there are mines, like right there, those mines are going to eat up all of our Zookas. We got a little bit of a split, they changed paths ever so, ever so slightly, and as a result, I think we can get, oh, look at that, those left Zookas went the way they weren't supposed to go. So, at this point, it is all done but the crying. I might still win, but if I do, it's going to be just based on that base standing up. All of these mines have eaten all of our Zookas, but thankfully, the heavies on their own can take an engine room down. And that is where things just get so incredibly frustrating and slow and... It's just not a great season as far as that goes. I personally love the short seasons because it means that you can get your troops in and moving and you're not waiting days for things and you don't have to like grit your teeth. 
and you're going to have to grit your teeth a number of times throughout this season. So uh, more so than any other season that's been recently that I can recall, get your chests, put your device down, and then pick it up 8, 16, 24 hours later. Look at that, the base, Mr. P showing his worth, building that ridiculous base, getting me the win all based on the base. So big shout out to Mr. P, all of the join at own risk group members. Alan, 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 Steve, you're done, buddy. Down goes Alan. We pick up the W. Um, if you don't know what that Alan, 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 Steve is, please hit me up because that is a worth a watch. I don't know if it's actually worth a watch, but it's on the YouTubes and it's uh, well, well done. I think that's by BBC, actually. Whew, where are we going with this? You know what? You know exactly where we're going with this. We're going back to the well, getting all of the heavies out. We're going to get that one boat of heavies to drop all of those mines. And then we are going to flare right to here. And you're asking yourself, why am I flaring there? Ground flares, my friend. Gla ground flares, ground flares, ground flares. That is going to get us past all of those mines. And then once we're past, we can flare onto that engine room. You'll notice the heavies are starting to get wrecked a little bit by one simple flamethrower. One flamethrower. We do not have troop health, which is going to affect the heavies. I kind of assume that is why there's no troop health this season because they want to deal they don't want heavy rush to happen every single season but still we're still doing it this person's flamethrowers are all up front and don't have any and i said i didn't have anything to do except for watch my flares and then i didn't watch my flares so do keep an eye on those flares we should be able to beat three minutes as long as we can get past that final flamethrower our heavies are all on fire the ridiculous fire effect but it's not quite enough Oh, we're going to be under three minutes. Those flamethrowers did too much damage. So if you're sitting there and you have not opened all your chests yet, do consider going and getting those shock mines, those cannons, those sniper towers, and then rushing your butt all the way over to heavies because watching grenadiers is like watching paint dry at times. So frustrating. I myself don't mind it. You mix in a couple zookas or a couple boats of riflemen, and they work, they can get you progressed along the heavies, but as soon as you have heavies, things open up a little bit, and I find that this season gets a lot more tolerable. So even from a fun perspective, go get heavies, um, but most of all, from a winning future-proofing yourself, go get heavies, go get heavies, go get heavies. And they're on the path. You don't have to go off the path to get them. Uh, one thing that is off the path, that people will be considering is smoke. Just be aware that smoke is 48 extra keys to go get. That is a lot of extra keys. So realistically, shocks are only 28 off. Shocks might be better off for you than smoke, or you could just get neither. Go get those rocket launchers or those rocket choppers to be determined. That is all for me though. As always, coming in with the early season tech tree, guide to success. Hopefully that helped you out. If you have any questions at all, hit me up in the comments. Otherwise, I shall talk to you soon. I'm Zedmot. Happy summer or winter if you're south of the equator, obviously. I shall talk to you soon. Thanks for coming in. Peace!